All right, good morning, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get, thank you. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, you can hear me okay in the back? How's the sound? Too loud? It's okay? Good, super. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. It's great to see so many folks here. Um, my name's Eric Schneider. I'm the Assistant Superintendent for Instruction in uh, Minnetonka Public Schools. That's a suburban school district. It's about 15 minutes west of uh, Minneapolis-St. Paul area. Um, and, and I think the, you know, my session here is navigating the summit, making the most of your time here as an educator. And just to give you a little bit of background on that, so this is my fifth year, whoops, sorry gang, let's get back. This is my fifth year at, uh, at this event. I, um, as a part of my job as the assistant superintendent in Minnetonka, I lead innovation. About 10,000 students, but it's, a, I mean, it's got a mind of its own here. Am I, I'm touching something here. I'll set it down, there we go. The uh, Minnetonka is a school district that's very high achieving in Minnesota. We always rank, you know, first, second, or third. Hey, is it auto forwarding, Brian? Can you check that? If it is, just unplug that feature. I'll just go manual. So let Brian fix the slide deck real quick, gang. So Minnetonka, 10,000 students, but very uh, high achieving and, um, and, and also very innovative. We got a superintendent, Dennis Peterson, who came in in about 2001 and he brought in some really innovative programming. But then he brought me in six years ago and he said um, he wanted to create a culture of innovation that would really start from the grassroots ground up. And so that's what I've been leading in Minnetonka for the last six years. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak on that at 3.30. It's a little 30-minute breakout session, a K-12 prime time, something very exciting, a title like that. But, um, but if you're interested in the innovation program that I lead, you know, please come and hear that uh, presentation at 3.30. It's 30 minutes. It's pretty quick. But, um, but I think some of the things we've learned about how to build a, a crowd-based innovation program in your district or school is, um, is, is pretty instructive. We've learned a ton, and it's really um, added a lot of value to our, to our uh, school district. So I'm not going to talk a lot about that here with you folks. That's 3.30 this afternoon. But I'm going to talk about navigating this event. I've been here for five years, and, and uh, Courtney Riley and the team that, you know, Michael Moe, the whole team at GSV, they, they've really built an incredible event. And, uh, and yet, if, you, if, you, um, if you've been here before, you can have this sense of, you know, am I supposed to be here? You know, it's a lot of investors, it's a lot of entrepreneurs, it's a lot of people on the business side of education who, um, who we don't always interact with. Okay, a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the folks who design the products that we use had to start at some point with an idea that needed funding. And, and so what these folks have to do is they have to find those investors. Go there. All right, thanks, Brian. Let me just check this out, gang. Not clicking for me, Brian. So... So what you see at this event, which is very unique, I was just not pressing hard enough, maybe? OK, so, super, thank you. Um, <laughs> oh, I just pushed a little bit harder. There we go. Um, OK, let me back up a little bit, gang. Come on, there we go. So yeah, there we go. How about a round of applause for the slide? Uh, yeah, thank you. Anyway, gang, so it's, a, you know, so it's a very, very unique event. You know, I go to a lot of conferences, I'm sure a lot of you folks do as well, that are really designed for us. But this, this is really designed for, again, those entrepreneurs who are trying to launch new products, the investors who are trying to find great new investment uh, opportunities. And you know, I, I think, just, just my opinion now, I don't think this has, had been a real, a real uh, vibrant marketplace until we started leaning towards uh, uh, devices in our classrooms. And now that you can launch uh, a killer app and you know, have an incredible uh, a new company in a matter of minutes, uh, now suddenly there's a there are a lot of investors interested in the education market. Now, certainly, you know, do we have some charter school friends in the room, charter friends? So you can see the room is almost half charter school or, or, or you know, some kind of a new um, learning environment uh, system. And that is something you're going to find very prevalent here at GSV. There's a very even mix between you know, K-12 public 
and, uh, and charter groups. So this is a, I think it's a nice place where, the, where our two worlds kind of intersect. And it's a great chance to meet folks from the other side of that fence and learn more about what each other's doing. So you're going to get those opportunities. I'm going to click through some of that here in a second. Hopefully, you're sitting in something of a Java-like table. If you're not, that's totally OK. Um, and hopefully, you have uh, found the Google form that allows you to kind of introduce yourself to everybody else in the room. Um, if you haven't found that yet, it's on Twitter. Um, you just have to go on the ASU GSV Summit. Uh, hashtag, and you'll find I've been I've been clicking that or tweeting that out all morning and last night and whenever. But um, is there anybody who has not found it yet? Okay, so maybe if you've got somebody who hasn't found it yet sitting at your table, if someone else could help them find it, really appreciate it. You just got to get on Twitter to to find that uh, Google form. So here's some of the takeaways from this session. I just want to say, gang, that uh, that you know we've got roughly an hour and a half in here. But it's a very fluid, very workshop-like session. So if you have to get up and get to an 11 o'clock session, if there's something else going on, you, you just go ahead and do that. I think there, I don't know exactly where the restrooms are, but you, know, you can find them out there somewhere in the maze of, of rooms. I, I do want to say that lunch is at noon. That's the important one. And it is across the street. So I want to make sure that if there are folks who want to stay long, we've got to make sure we wrap up by at least a quarter to noon so we can get across the street and get a seat at the uh, educator luncheon. So, so I wanna, I'm going to be, hopefully you walk out of the door uh, whenever you do, understanding why this summit is really a, a unique experience. And I'm going to talk more about that here in a minute. Um, I hope if you're not already familiar with Twitter, that you go ahead and take the plunge and get in there and, uh, and connect on Twitter. That's where we're going to be um, hopefully having some back channel conversation. And I did make a little bit of a mistake, gang. It should, the, the hashtag for educators, I've got GSV EDU K12. Just because there's a lot of higher ed folks, and not, that, not to say that uh, you know, we need to stay separate, but you know, the conversations can be really different. So GSV EDU K12 is the hashtag that I've been using. So connecting on Twitter, it's going to be something we're going to talk about and do, hopefully. Connecting on the conference app. Now, I'm going to talk about the conference app in a couple minutes. If you haven't already been in there, you might take this opportunity right now just to download it from the App Store. Okay? That way, when I get to that in a couple of minutes, you'll be ready to go. All right, and then click. There it is. What I think is hopefully going to be a really great um, value that this session is going to add is that you'll be able to find each other on this Google spreadsheet. I should have uh, some basket of door prizes here, but raise your hand if you found the Google spreadsheet. I tweeted it out this morning. Nice, good. Lots of folks here. Good. I wouldn't have had enough prizes. Um, but, but if you go on that Google spreadsheet, essentially what it is is that you've got a, a, a spreadsheet Rolodex of business cards of everybody in the room, as well as the, the, the topics or issues that each individual attendee is most interested in. And really, that's that for me is the is the key kind of takeaway from this session is the chance to not only you know, be able to build a little bit of an internal network at this event, but also find who are the people that are looking for the same stuff you're looking for. And I've asked people to identify their, their key interests and why. And I know I looked at the spreadsheet. I know not everybody filled in all those fields, but this is where you're really in luck. You can go back and edit your form. So yeah, I know. You're welcome. So, so if you didn't put your interests in there, you can go back in and do that. There's a, there's a checkbox where you can check stuff, and that's great. But also, um, you know, to actually tell a little bit of why you chose certain things, it's going to be helpful for your, uh, for your uh, colleagues here to find out uh, what it is exactly that you're looking for. So I hope that adds a lot of value. It's, it's got email addresses. It's got cell phones so people can text and connect like that. So you know, it's, it's only available to people with the link. So we'll try to keep that one a little bit of a firewall around that. This one, I think, I'm hoping this part's going to be um, a value add as well. You'll find, I, I tweeted out this morning, this document that's got links to Google Docs, collaborative docs, for all the different topics that people may or may not be interested in. So personalized learning, uh, competency-based education, uh, online, blended learning. You'll find there's a separate Google Doc for each one of those topics. And if you go into that, uh, the, the main uh, Google Doc that I tweeted out, you'll see that menu, and you can click into those. Again, all available only to people with the link. They're not public on the web. 
So it should be a semi-private conversation, obviously, you know, to, to whatever extent Google allows it to be private. Um, but you guys can use that to, uh, you know, to identify, you know, what it is specifically that you're doing at your school or district or what you're seeing when you're in a session. And hopefully those Google Docs will be a nice way for you to, you know, capture your own learning but also learn from each other. And it might, might even allow people to find each other in individual sessions. I think if you, if you really lean in and drive that, those Google Docs um, for your experience these next couple days, you'll find that it, you'll, you'll, you won't feel quite as lonely. Because this can be kind of a lonely conference. Again, I don't know what the final number is. Anybody hear the total attendees? Is it 4,000? Some crazy number. And educators are only about 250 of that. So we're a very small minority within this larger event. And so what you want to do is really try to find those people that are looking for something similar to what you're looking for. So collaborating on, this, on, the, on the Google Docs, I hope, will add some nice value. And, and hey, gang, if you, see, uh, if you don't, don't see the topic that you're interested in, you just let me know. Um, you actually can edit that main page. So if you want to add a topic, you can. I just ask that you uh, make sure you make it editable and viewable. You've got to go through all the Google Doc uh, uh, share uh, links to make sure that other people can edit and see it. So that's number five. And then lastly here, hopefully you'll be able to build a schedule that's you know, somewhat based on your priorities. And, and again, there are so many different sessions to, to choose from. Hopefully those Google Docs, people will go in and kind of identify which sessions they're finding that they think are, are most interesting. And you can you know, get some hot tips from your uh, colleagues who are interested in the same topics. So any questions about any of those six that I've just listed out? I know we got a, we got a fly mic around here somewhere. So if someone's got a question, we can, we can get a microphone in front of you. Anyone with a question about just kind of uh, those, those deliverables? DeAndre, I don't see any hands up. I used to think that meant that everybody understood, and then I learned that's not what that means. So <laughs> it means something else, but it's okay. We're, we're going to keep going, and if you want to any time, just interrupt, go ahead. Um, so I just want to spend a minute talking about the conference app. That's me, obviously, um, but just, uh, just to kind of level set a little bit here, gang. The conference app is available in the App Store, and what's different about the conference app is that the Connect feature that you find here, you see at the bottom of my picture there, I have a pointer here, but um, there's a Connect button. That, that, with that feature, you can email anybody at the conference but it's an, an anonymizing email address. So they don't know, um, you're not getting their actual email address that's going through the system. So you can find anybody here through that, which is a nice feature. Uh, also, come on now, clicker. Oh, there I did it, Brian. All right. There it is. Hey. <laughs> It's getting to be like that, I think. Uh, hey, gang, it's just obviously there's an edit feature there, so you can get in there and uh, put in your profile. Um, the, it allows you to view and build a schedule like a lot of conference apps. It's not that, you know, it's not that magic, magical. You can do that right over here. Got a little red circle there. Oh, not, it's too fast, gang. Come on back. Come on back. Stay with me. Just got a huge delay on this clicker, and I'm trying to get back. There it is. Freeze. All right. Whew. So I've, I've circled. If you, if you get, guys, if you click on the agenda bar at the top of your uh, of the schedule, the center, the middle one, that's going to take you to that far screen. And you know, the nice feature there is you can just per personalize or customize your own schedule. And so you can click on my schedule. And everything that you've clicked, you know, put a checkbox on the calendar, it just, it just populates your, you know, the sessions you're interested in. So you know, if, you, if you've driven a conference app before, it's nothing new. But you know, just so that we're kind of setting the level here and everybody has the same information, that's how you uh, customize the app for, um, you know, for yourself here. So, now here comes the Google, uh, the Google spreadsheet that I talked about earlier. And this is what you should be able to find. And hopefully with this tool, what you're going to do is you're going to be able to scan very quickly. I think last time I looked, and I, I should check it again here, we had about uh, 70 or so people in. 
Let's just see what we got cooking right now. I think now we're up to uh, anybody in there? Oh, that's nice. Good. So we're up to about 90, 90 folks in there. So if you haven't gotten in there yet, you know, I encourage you to consider that. But what you'll be able to do is very quickly and easily scan through the, uh, the attendee list. You can find people by their jobs or what, whatnot. I'm going to try it this way. All right, thanks, man. Again, allowing you to connect via email, text, Twitter. I didn't put people's Twitter. I didn't put a column or a field in there for Twitter handles. So that was probably a miss on my part. And then uh, lastly, you know, this is a sortable spreadsheet for you. So if you want to just sort it by interest, you know, you can very quickly and easily find, you know, who are the, who are the people looking for the things you're looking for. All right. Google Docs. Anybody jumped onto a Google Doc yet and have kind of figured out that navigation? All right, thank you. Got one. Um, so this is what the uh, this is what the main page looks like. Leading Educator Collaborative Docs. Got some suggestions there for you. But again, capture notes while you're attending sessions. Number two, make deeper connections to fellow educators working on similar issues. So you know, instead of just you know a quick shout out on Twitter, you can actually really engage on that Google Doc and and get into a little bit of a deeper dialogue. And I think maybe this is one of the best features is you know, that Google Doc will stay live. So you can stay connected after the event. It can be a nice back channel. Uh, you know, it can be your notes from the, uh, from the event. All right. So that's just kind of making sure everybody's aware of what the collaborative doc you know, navigation system is like. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll start kind of table talking and workshopping here in a little bit. So I can move around if people are having a hard time navigating stuff. But I, I want to just take a, a couple of minutes here and give you a little bit of a sense of kind of what this, you know, what, what you're going to see out there in the different uh, breakout rooms and, and whatnot. And again, you know, I'm assuming pretty much everybody here is a first time uh, uh, attendee. Anybody a second or a third? All right, Barbara, a couple got, got a handful. So you guys need to help me out here if I get in the weeds a little bit. But, uh, but what you're going to find, obviously, is you're going to find just some, some really interesting keynotes. You're going to find keynotes at lunch, keynotes uh, you know, in, the, in the later parts of the day, and some, some very interesting opportunities to hear uh, people who are really thought leaders in education, not only in the K-12 space, but in higher ed space, in, in publics and charters, and all kinds of really breakthrough um, work that's happening in our field. Some, some things that, again, the years that I've been here, I oftentimes hear at keynote presentations topics that I, I didn't even know was trending yet in education. And you know, I fancy myself someone who pays pretty close attention to what's happening. And there's a lot of conversations in the keynote sessions that are very forward thinking. So the keynotes are, are top shelf. And you're also going to find some really interesting trending topics. Just shout out uh, topics that you've noticed that are trending topics in, the, uh, in some of the sessions, panel sessions and breakouts. What are people seeing? Interoperability is huge here, right? Because you can have all the tech products you want, but if it doesn't all click together seamlessly, it's, it's, it's wasted money, right? There was something over here I didn't. Personalized, Personalized learning. learning. Personalized learning has got to be the, 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 the hottest trend right now in our, in our uh, profession. So you're going to see a lot of entrepreneurs trying to tr kind of crack the code on personalized learning with software products for the most part. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, taking, taking personalized learning a step further and really connecting to the world of work and autonomous you know, learning environments and you know, the, the, the uh, possibilities are endless there. So it's, it's really, you know, you're going to hear all those things. One, one trend that I noticed this year which really su surprised me, anybody else notice this? Human resources, teacher recruitment. It's a really, really strong trend. There's maybe five or six breakouts and panel sessions on uh, hiring. And so, you know, obviously there are teacher shortages across the country, right? And everybody's uh, stretching to find good candidates. So here come entrepreneurs who are trying to solve that problem for us with tools that can make the hiring process, um, you know, easier or more uh, 
productive. So you're going to see some really interesting trending topics. And you know, to really zero in, I, obviously, I put the checkbox, checkbox list together uh, of topics that you know, I know are trending just from my personal experience. But there are some things that, um, that uh, will surprise all of us. You're going to find a lot of panel discussions. Now, some people love panel discussions because you get to hear four or five people at once. But not everybody loves panel discussions. You're going to find a lot of them here. And they're all based on typically on topics, and you'll you know you get a lot of times just 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 uh, 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 a lot of what do they call that uh, 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 exciting uh, agreement, right? They're 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 just agreeing, not not necessarily dis disagreeing with each other, but a lot of agreement. So some not very often you get a real disruptive panel in my experience, but you know you'll get to hear a number of different perspectives on a topic all at once, and that can be uh, that can be really interesting too. So you get a lot of panel discussions. But here's where things get a little crazy. All right, these are the pitch sessions. You saw them listed as venture presentations or growth presentations. Okay, this is where, these are the rooms where the entrepreneurs are seeking funding. And they, they, they purchase time up on stage to do, and I, I don't know what the time slots are, are this year. In the past, they've been uh, seven minutes. Does anybody know for sure what the pitch sessions are? They're seven again this year? So these, these are sessions. Is, is anybody going to pitch this year? Anybody in this room? All right, Jay. Good luck. What's that? Uh, well, Jay, do you want to tell us what? Did you have to pay? No. Okay. Okay, Jay. Well, you are a brave soul, but uh, but I, I think what Jay, what you're referring to is the um, are the those uh, those uh, short. Uh, innovation uh, at work presentations, right? So I'm guessing several of you are doing those, right? The, the, short, shot, the short shots where, you, yep, I'm seeing some heads, some heads nodding. So Jay, that's, that's a, a, the same length of time, but it's a little bit of a different transaction, yeah. Um, the entrepreneurs who are pitching in those rooms are looking for funding. And oftentimes they're looking for 50, 60, $100,000 to get them uh, through the next stage of their product development. And, and so these are entrepreneurs who have a, what they believe to be a killer idea, but they need the funding from an investor. You know, they've tapped out their uncle and aunt and grandma and any, anybody, their neighbors, anybody else they could reach out to who could give them some money. Uh, they've tapped that out. And so now they're looking for an investor. And so it's a fascinating experience, and I really encourage you to just, just sample it. I don't know if you want to spend a ton of time in those rooms, but you owe it to yourself just to go in there and just see what it's like because it's very intense. The, the entrepreneurs will stand up here. They've got a digital clock like the one I've got here, except uh, sometimes they're actually up on the wall so everybody can see the times as, as it's winding down. But when that, when that uh, session ends and you hit zero on the clock, you've got to get off the stage because that's an expensive stage, right? And you hope when you walk out the door that an investor walks out after you. You see what I'm talking about? That's a big moment, right? When you've, when you've invested a lot to be here at this event, and you stand up with your pitch, you've got your slide deck, and then you're hoping some funder is, is encouraged or excited enough by your presentation that they follow you out in the hallway. So here's the next best part. Go look at the hallways outside the pitch rooms, because that's where the deals are, are, being, are being made. It's fascinating, right? And again, this, this is all stuff that we would never see in our role as educators, but it's critical to you know, the, the, the development of new products, new software applications, you know, hardware, software, whatever it is, systems and services, they all start with an idea and an entrepreneur who has to go out and get funding to get their idea moving. So you'll see the, 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 the pitch rooms, they're, they're actually called uh, venture presentations and um, growth presentations. And they're running mainly in the afternoons, I want to say from 2 to 5-ish. So if you go into those sessions, you know, that's what you're walking into, and again, you don't want to leave this uh, you know, Salt Lake without having at least experienced that a little bit, but you probably don't need to spend you know, more than a, a few minutes in that room and you've gotten your taste of it. You can actually look and see who's presenting, and you may actually see a product or a vendor that you want to hear, but a lot of times these are, these are uh, products and vendors that you haven't heard of yet. Right? They're, they're, they're on their way to being you know, uh, household names, but they're not there yet. Fireside chats. So you'll see some fireside chats, gang. They, they are what they sound like. They're just uh, they're very simple, you know, casual, informal moments where they'll have a, 
somebody who's talking on a topic. Um, sometimes the fireside chats can be really interesting because they are, um, you know, the people that, that are well known in our in our field, and they've you know they've written a book or they've done something uh, worthwhile. And this is a great chance to a little bit more of an intimate, informal, like uh, you know when Michael Horn uh, had written. Um, uh, 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 disrupting class, right? You know, he had a fireside chat. You know, Heather uh, Staker, who did blended, blended. She had a fireside chat. So you can find authors, and it's a nice way to hear more about uh, about what they're working on. So those are interesting. You also have movie screenings. Um, last year they had. Uh, uh, um, oh, who can help me out? Uh, Barbara. What was the movie like? Oh, I'm forgetting. I'll remember it later. But I know there's a couple of great movies that they're going to screen, or P there's a PBS uh, documentary that they're going to screen. I met the teacher, uh, Robert, uh, uh, last night at the pre-party. Um, so you, you have a chance to sit and, and see some of those movies in PBS that aren't released yet. So that's a nice, it's a nice feature here. You'll also find, gang, a lot of the sessions, they're not panel sessions. They're not breakout sessions. They're specifically from the vendors. You know, like Brain Pop, or you know, or, or uh, I noticed that Pearson has um, underwritten a number of these vendor presentations. You know, Pearson has, you know, has uh, uh, you know interest in a lot of these companies, so they'll present specifically on their product. And sometimes, you know, those are interesting to you if it's a product that you um, that you are purchasing or using. That could be a possible interest. <clears throat> and then there's outdoor yoga. Who got who got up this morning and did yoga? All right, yay. Awesome, good. It's, it's, it's tomorrow as well, right? And Wednesday. Nice, okay. So all of those hands that did not go up, all right? Let's see you guys out there tomorrow. Um, all right. Now, some unique opportunities. I mean, some of this I've already kind of sprinkled in, gang, but, but uh, you probably have received a few emails. <laughs> From, right, from entrepreneurs who would like uh, to introduce you to their new idea or product, right? And yeah, I just really encourage you to take them up on it. You know, they just want to meet for 15 minutes. They just want to show you what they're working on. They oftentimes want to get your input. And, you know, it's a great chance to influence kind of their roadmap, right? Tell them, yeah, I wouldn't use that. I wouldn't do this. And, you know, let them know what you think about their product. You know, sometimes there's a sales undercurrent there. Like, they're, they, they love to get you involved in a pilot, you know, et cetera. You know, in the five years that I've been here, I, I, I've gone home every year with at least two pilot products in my pocket. And, and a couple of times I've even signed contracts here. So, you know, you can act, and, and, and sometimes you can negotiate a pretty good price. So it's not a bad place to you know, do some of that business. If you, if you do purchasing or procurement for your school or district, you know, you, you will find people interested in signing a, a, a contract right here. But oftentimes, they're reaching out to you. They just want to meet. It's, it's really pretty harmless. But it's a great chance for you to give them some feedback and influence you know, their product design. And, and you can build a relationship. Oftentimes, you know, I'll get you know, follow-up emails from those folks. And you know, I, I, when eSpark just started out, and now it's a, you know, it's a pretty big company now. But when eSpark was just starting out, I, mean, I was one of the first you know, educators they met with. And, and it's just kind of fun to watch these companies as they continue on. And, uh, you know, and you may or may not find a fit you know, in your school or district. So really encourage you to take advantage of those when those emails come to you. Don't be afraid. Um, give, them, give them 15 minutes, a cup of coffee, and, uh, and just, just hear what they have to say. You know, I've already mentioned a little bit about future trends. You know, the hiring one, HR-related um, uh, trend, you know, I think is fascinating. But we're going to have the U.S. Department of Ed, new uh, Secretary of Education is going to be here, Susan DeVos. So you're going to get to hear, you know, about, oh, Betsy, sorry, I said, did I say Susan? <laughs> Thank you. I got help up front. Uh, so we're going we're gonna, to, oh, I hope she's not in the room, but uh, probably snuck in. Uh, but, but you'll get to, you'll get to, it's not only about, and, and like James Shelton, uh, who I think is going to speak on, on Wednesday, who was at the department, you know, uh, until recently. But, you know, a lot of these folks have a real insight into what's happening at the federal level or, you know, how, how some of the new, you know, rules and regulations are influencing new products. And you can, you know, if you, if you really listen closely, sometimes you can kind of see the future. You can see where things are moving just by listening to some of those um, folks talk. So future trends, products, policies, and then um, 
you know, again, sitting in those pitch rooms, you know, my personal experience here really gained a lot of insight into that world of ed tech investment. Really seeing, you know, how these folks are trying to get their product out into the, you know, out into the uh, schools and districts. And, and, here's, and here's something that you're, you may or may not bump into, but there's a lot of frustration. There's a lot of frustration with, you know, educators in general. And, and people struggle with the whole purchasing and pr procurement transaction. And a lot of the entrepreneurs and, and vendors are frustrated with how hard it is to get into our schools. Well, you know, we've got a lot of data privacy related issues. I mean, we can't just let every tech company in, you know, to our firewall. So, you know, this is, it's a, it's a you know, there's a reason why it's as hard and, and, and complex as it is. But um, you will pick up on some frustration. The one thing that really hit me a couple of years ago was this new trend from these entrepreneurs that their, their interest now is actually to go right around educators and go straight to the parents with their products. And so that's, I mean, I don't, I don't know if that's, a, if that's something I would call a threat, but it's something for us to think about. You know, if, if these products start to be developed, not so much for teacher and classroom use, but for, but, you know, for parents at home, and that starts to become the transaction, um, it's, it's gonna significantly change you know, the future of learning, right? And so, you know, I think there is a reason why it's smart for us in, whether, whether you're on the charter side or public side, whatever it may be, you know, to lean into some of these new products and to be a test environment for them and grow those relationships because if we start getting left out of the uh, conversation because they're going, they're, they're marketing straight to parents, um, I think it's gonna change, you know, the, the, the power that we do have in the marketplace. So just, just a little, uh, don't, want to, don't want to scare anybody here, it's Monday morning, I want you to have a great week, but it's just something you know, uh, to come back to in your, in your head later on if you think that uh, might make some sense here. I got another bit here. And I talked about this earlier, gang, you know, about, you know, this is a great conference where you can really find that intersection between K-12, higher ed, charter, and then et cetera, because there's a lot here. Um, there's someone here from Dubai, we just met, uh, Somewhere sitting in the back there. Yep, there he is. Hey, so you, you'll meet folks who are coming from internationally, you know, whether they're from schools or products. But it's a great way to to meet people from different you know sectors within our profession. Um, when I've been here in previous years, I've learned a lot about higher ed. You know, I'm, I'm K-12 again. I'm an assistant superintendent of a K-12 district, but you know, listening to the you know to to kind of what's happening in the higher ed marketplace. And, and how disrupted higher ed is right now is really interesting for a K-12 person because we're trying to build a pipeline to higher ed, right? We're trying, to, we're trying to connect with what's happening there. And when higher ed is as sort of turbulent as it is today, um, it's not an easy you know, intersection. So you can learn a lot about what's happening in other parts of our profession. And then, you know, what I c continue to think is always the best takeaway for me personally when I go to a conference is to meet other educators. You know, to meet people who are looking for the same stuff I am. And if you're anything like me, I mean, that's actually where I get the most value out of conferences is the networking. And, and that's really why I've built this. You know, this is an orientation session, but I, what I really think is the most value add for you are those collaborative docs and that Google spreadsheet where you can find each other quickly and easily. So, you know, connecting with other educators involved in exciting, innovative work. You're not at this conference unless you're somehow tied into a school or district that's doing something very forward thinking. You know, that's how you get here. And so it's a very, very unique group. And you won't go to, I don't think, any other conference or event where you'll find people who are leaning forward in our profession as much as this, this particular event. So, you know, the, the folks in the room, and again, this is all the kind of first year attendees. I mean, there are folks in who are educators at this conference who aren't here with us today because it's their second or third year or more, but those folks, you want to find them as well. So really look at that, look at those Google Docs and try to you know, build those networking relationships. So I think it's a lot of value. So I've done a little bit of an overview of the event. I've talked about some of the unique opportunities. Before we jump in, I want to, I want to drive some table conversation um, because my wisdom only goes so far here. I'm a practitioner like you guys. So I want to make sure if there's questions that are still kind of lingering, um, you know, uh, the comment that came to me earlier today was, you know, kind of that 80-20, you know, help me figure out what do I not need to go to and what, you know, do I need to go to? And I think, you know, that is 
you know, for, for me personally, you know, that's not an easy thing to do at this conference because there's so much to see and there's so many surprises um, that you really, you know, you really have to search through the sessions. I think the way you're going to find the, the best value for your time is from, um, hopefully people will use those Google Docs and really, you know, show what sessions they're going to. Like, for, for example, I'm very interested in personalized learning. It's, I think it's, you know, it's, it's the, it's, uh, you know, I think once we can really figure out personalized learning in, in our school district, it's going to change the way we teach dramatically. We're close, but we're not there yet. And so that, I listed that as my number one interest on the Google Doc, uh, on the Google Sheet, Google Form. And, uh, you know, I want to find those people who, who also put it down as number one. Because I know that's your top interest too, and I think we're going to make a strong connection there. So again, that's the logic of the of those collaborative docs, and you know, I'm I'm really fingers crossed, hoping that that adds value for you guys. So questions on anything that I've said so far? Got the got the hot mic running through DeAndre. Let's give it up for DeAndre. He's got my back today. You mentioned our presentations. Could you talk a little bit more about that and what the audience is for that? Great. So. Yeah. And I think, you know, if you haven't already circled that on your, um, your or clicked it on your schedule on your app, the, those, those uh, short shots, they're called Innovation at Work, I believe. And it's Innovation at Work 1, Innovation at Work 2. And, uh, and, and, and that, I think, Jay, is going to be, you know, those are, those are my um, uh, absolutes. I'm going to be at those sessions because that's where you're going to hear from fellow educators on some issue or you know, innovation that you're proud of in your school or district. Um, so yeah, I, I strongly encourage people to attend those sessions because that's, that seven minute window of time is, is flies by. Um, so that's hard to cram uh, you know, everything that you want to say into seven minutes. But I think the takeaways from those uh, um, uh, innovation at work uh, breakouts are going to be awesome. So, you know, anybody want to sh do a shout out on what they're speaking on? Jay, what, just tell us what you're speaking on real quick. Uh, our topic's per personalized learning uh, we're, and gamified learning. So we've added a game layer, Jane McGonigal's work there. So awesome. it's combining the two. Super. So good. And, and again, comes at you real fast, seven minutes. But if that's on your roadmap and that's something you're interested in, you're going to hear it from a, from a fellow educator. And that's uh, Fullerton, California. Right, Jay, thanks. Any, anybody else want to, Barb? Digital early literacy for preschool English learners. Oh, that's a hot one, Barb. Yeah. It's Barbara Nemko, the, the Napa County Office uh, Superintendent, and, and she's going to talk about digital early literacy. I got that right? Yeah, wow, that's going to be a great uh, short shot there. We've got somebody in the back. Uh, I'm talking about media literacy and how we can better equip students to combat fake news, look past stereotypes, and use media to present their own narrative. So, uh, Nate, can you give your name and uh, school district? Uh, my name is Tony Weaver, Jr., and uh, we work with schools in Atlanta, but we're looking to work with schools everywhere. Awesome. Good. Thanks for that shout out. And we've got one hand right here. It's free promotion right here. Uh, good morning. My name is Emily Wilson. I'm presenting tomorrow with Melissa Sweezy um, about how redesigning Tier 1 instruction with personalized learning allows you to move to a full inclusion model for your special education students. That's and that's great. tomorrow afternoon. Super. Thank you for that. Good morning, I'm Jean Garrity from Leap Innovations. We're presenting at two o'clock in this room today on personalized learning, how to get started, specifically around using some tools to um, become more learner focused and engage in learner led practices. Thank you, Jean. Yeah, Leap Innovation has got, has got a great group of partnerships and they're doing some really super work out of Chicago, right? Yeah, great, thanks Jean for shouting out, yeah. Hi everyone, James Watson from the New School in Atlanta talking about uh, lessons learned three years in to a community-engaged learning micro-school pilot. Is it, I'm sorry, could you say your name one more time? It kind of James Watson, James, and the okay. talk is 4 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. 4 p.m. tomorrow, all right, new school in Atlanta. Is that expeditionary learning? Is that your platform? Community engagement. Community engagement, thank you. Hi, I'm Karen Brio, and I'm presenting tomorrow, um, leading a personalized learning transformation, lessons learned in change management. All right, good, we're getting some good shout outs. Gail Pletnick, 
uh, Dizzard, uh, did I say it right, Gail? Dysart. Dysart, yeah. okay. Gail Plutnik from Dysart, um, and we are presenting, I am presenting on creating space for innovation and personalization and really thinking about space from a variety of, of different ways. So like classroom interiors, you mean physical space? Awesome. Good. Thank you, Gail. Hi, my name is Keith Pals. I'm from Chicago. Uh, I'm doing seven minutes on how you can use, uh, how we use in my building, uh, our time and our talent a little creatively so we can get all hands on deck to support our kids for a certain time during the day. Nice. So thinking differently about time in the day. Awesome. Nice. Any other shout outs on your uh, innovation piece? Okay, good. And, then, and it just, you know, that's a great chance to hear from your colleagues, your fellow educators. So you circle those sessions. It'd be nice if we had great turnout for those. So um, any other questions about anything I've said so far other than the shout outs? Ah, okay. Arizona room? Yeah. Arizona, which is just down the hall here, right? Those folks presenting, it's innovation at work. Did I get that right? You know, it's session one and then session two. All right. I'm relying on the crowd right now. What's it called? Okay. Two o'clock tomorrow. Innovation at work. Arizona room. All right. Cir circle that one or check that one on your uh, app so that you're there. It'd be great to have a good crowd. Cheer, cheer each other on. All right, any other questions about any of the uh, comments or uh, bullets that I've talked about here about the conference? All right, so what I want to do now, gang, is I want to pivot a little bit away from kind of talking broadly about the event, and I want to get people talking to each other. So what I want to do next here is, is um, start to uh, uh, scramble a little bit here in the room by topics. And I've got a, uh, I've got a, uh, a fantastic assistant here this is Jeff Erickson, who's uh, standing up. Jeff, you want to wave to the, to the folks? Jeff's the high school principal in Minnetonka, so if you're a high school principal, you can, you can uh, find Jeff later on, share uh, war stories. But um, Jeff's got some of the topics that, uh, are, that people have been identifying as topics of interest. So what we're going to do is we're going to set those out, and we're going to, in fact, Jeff, let's do it right now. Go ahead and start. Now, um, let me ask this question, if, if, and, and, and you can, Jeff, pick up the uh, job of likes as you go. Thank you. And, uh, and so we're what we're doing now is we're switching out the placards, we're putting topics on the tables. What we're going to try to do is organize people by topics. And what I'd like, if possible, for folks to do is to, um, uh, you don't have to stick with what you listed as number one, so you can get up and sit at any table that is a, has a topic that you're interested in. But, um, but as soon as Jeff, don't everybody get up just yet because Jeff's going to get trampled. But as he comes around and changes out the job alike placards with the topic placards, um, I'll call out, I'll just kind of tell you right now what they're looking like. And I know some people are going to hit 11 o'clock sessions, so by all means, if you're hitting a session. But up front, we've got digital learning, virtual learning, digital convergence. We've got OER, resources there, online, learning, personalized learning. We've got college and career ready to the right here. Mental health, SEL. I see global learning in the back right there. Jay's got that one. So you've got some different topics here. And we may need to throw out an extra personalized learning because I know that was a hot one. K-12 innovation just, just was set down. Competency-based learning. All right. Jeffrey, are you all done? OK, so at this point, what I'd like you to do is stand up and move to a table that has a placard that you're interested in, a topic of interest. Take about two minutes. We'll reset. <laughs> 